Oh, thank you, Layla, and thank you, Neil, beforehand. Neil was doing the, uh, the memory lane bit. He talked about who was a member in 2005. Let's keep going back. Who was a member in 1992? <laughs> Me too. Right, there you go. 1992, general election in a uh, little bit further north than here, a place called North West Durham. I stood for Parliament, and so did somebody called Theresa May. Uh, on the same ballot paper we were, I worked incredibly hard, did most of the things that Neil talked about, worked all the hours I could possibly find, and at the end I managed to miss out by just 20,000, and uh, <laughs> I learnt a bit since then. So I kind of pride myself on being one of those people who's known Theresa May the longest. Maybe somehow people would think that I can somehow predict the things that she was going to do and have some insight into her character and the kind of choices that she might, might make. And so let's scroll forward uh, to the 18th of April this year and I was sat in the departure lounge at Manchester Airport waiting to go down to Penzance to go campaigning in the county elections in Cornwall and it comes on to my Twitter feed that there is going to be an announcement uh, outside Downing Street by the Prime Minister. I thought, well, it'll be some policy thing. She won't call an election. Don't be silly. It's not as if, it's not as if she needs a bigger majority. After all, the Labour Party has just voted with her to deliver the extreme version of Brexit that she has chosen. You don't need a 100-seat Tory majority when the Labour Party has given you a 200-seat majority. Why would you call a general election? It's certainly not in the national interest. And then, as I flew, you see, I was one of those few people who did not know that she'd just called a general election, because it says airplane mode on your phone for a reason. You're meant to have it on airplane mode when you're on an airplane. And so there I was, flying down the country to Newquay from Manchester, one of that tiny minority of people who did not know that Theresa May had just called a general election. It gave me the ability to prepare my impromptu remarks and to, um, <laughs> and to gather my thoughts. What do I think will happen? What do I think should happen? It occurred to me, well, I don't think she'll call a general election. She doesn't need the majority. It's not in the national interest. And then I thought, but it might be in her interests, it might be in the Conservative Party's interests, and what little I knew really about Theresa May made me think that by the time I landed, that if I switched on my phone and it said she had called a general election, maybe I wouldn't be that surprised after all. And you see, I landed in Cornwall. I landed in a part of the United Kingdom which elected six out of six Conservative MPs two years ago. Six out of six Conservative MPs for a place, Cornwall, historically represented by people like David Penhaligon, people who have proudly stood up for their communities in the way that Layla will here in Oxford West and Abingdon. Stood up for those communities and what has happened in two years? Conservative MPs who have trooped to Westminster every week voted through the selling off of affordable housing for their communities, voted through the cuts in hospitals to their communities, voted to reduce the number of police officers on the streets in their communities, gone to do what the Westminster Tory whips tell them to do and ignore the people who sent them. And it builds a picture of a Conservative Party led by Theresa May who seems determined to take Britain for granted. Cornwall for granted, Oxfordshire for granted, Cumbria for granted, Scotland for granted, Wales for granted, all of you for granted. Tomorrow you have the chance to say, no chance, to, no way will we let you take us for granted. And across the country, no doubt whatsoever, however you voted in the referendum last June, we have an opportunity now where the Prime Minister seeks to have the kind of mandate, the kind of majority where she will get away with any old, bre any old Brexit. The idea that somehow she will not come up with a bad set of choices and a bad deal doesn't bear scrutiny. A bad deal? Dementia tax bad? That bad? We are trusting the judgement of one person who has shown in this last seven weeks that her judgement is poor and her ability, her inability to stand up even to her own backbenchers, our failure even to stand up to scrutiny in a leader's debate, and we're supposed to trust her to go to Brussels and fight for our future. Do not give the Conservative Party a blank cheque. If you give her a blank cheque tomorrow, it is a recipe for a bad deal for Britain, and it is a recipe for far more. 
Remember what Theresa May will hear if tomorrow you give her a landslide to major majority. She will assume you meant that you are okay with the dementia tax. She will assume that you meant you're okay with the fact that two in three schools in this country will sack teachers in six weeks time because they haven't got enough money. She will assume you are okay with cripplingly low uh, numbers of police on our streets after 20,000 police officers cut on Theresa May's watch. She will assume you are okay with continued underfunding for our National Health Service. And my message to everybody out there, if you are somebody who has traditionally voted Conservative and you are not okay with the dementia tax, you are not okay with police cuts, with school cuts, with chronic underinvestment in our National Health Service, if you are not okay with those things, tomorrow vote Liberal Democrats. And if you are... And if you are... And if you are one of those many, many people in this country who are Labour supporters, maybe also Green supporters, and who live in constituencies like Oxford West and Abingdon and countless others, and where the Liberal Democrats are the only serious challenges to the Conservatives, I ask you, lend us your vote, because tomorrow we can make sure Theresa May does not take you, your communities, your health service, our police service, your vote for granted. There is no doubt whatsoever that tomorrow is an election Theresa May thought she had in the bag, thought she had a colossal majority to deliver whatever it was that she wanted. And the thing about democracy is this, without a strong opposition, you get weak and hopeless government. Now I grew up in the 1980s in Preston, in Lancashire, under a conservative colossal majority, which meant I know exactly what it's like to live and belong to a community where you are taken for granted. I don't want that for this generation. I don't want that for this county or any other part of this country. There is nothing worse than growing up to raise our children in a country where we have a Prime Minister who assumes she has the right to deliver heartless and mean policies with a mandate she's gathered simply because the official opposition is too weak to hold her to account. So what you do over this next 24 hours sets the tone for the future of our country. I've been asked often why we have taken the positions we have in this campaign. Why have we fought so hard for a different direction for our country to change Britain's future? Why have we been bold enough to say that the British people should have the final say on the Brexit deal? Why have we been bold enough to say, yes, we'll put a penny on income tax to give you the best health and social care anywhere in the world? Why is that we have had that bold and principal position. And yes, I hope it wins us votes. I trust it will win us votes tomorrow. But essentially, I am here and I take the position that I have because in 30 years' time, when my kids are my age, I want to look them in the eye and say I did everything I could to change the direction of our country and to build a future for you. When you vote tomorrow, when you vote tomorrow, when you vote tomorrow, vote for yourself. Vote for your community, vote for your country, but vote for your children and vote for your grandchildren. Vote for the kind of country you would want them to grow in, up into. And remember, in the 24 hours you have left, you here have the ability to change Britain's future. You know how close elections can be. You know what can happen on the day. I tell you this tale and it's true. Pretty much at this point on the eve of poll in 2005, I got back to my office in Kendall after a hard day doing what you've been doing today. Delivering leaflets, knocking on doors and there, standing almost as a rebuke to, uh, in my face on the table with a thousand leaflets, good morning leaflets for my biggest and most liberal democrat friendly village in the north end of my constituency. They stared at me and my friend could see what I was thinking. I was crestfallen. I thought that could cost us the election. She looked at me. She said, do you want to win? I said, yes. She said, pick the flipping phone up and get those things delivered in the morning. I rang up five people, the youngest of whom was 72. And they all, <laughs> and I asked them the question. I said, will you get up at four o'clock in the morning and deliver a couple of hundred leaflets? Do you know what? They all said yes. And the night after that, Westmoreland and Lonsdale fell out of Tory hands into Liberal Democrat hands for the first time since 1906. And every one of those, and every one of those, every one of those volunteers now knows 
that with a majority that we had on that night of 267, that they single-handedly changed the course of history. That is in your hands tomorrow. There will be some of you who think after 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night, it's time to give up. People are telling you that they've voted or they've had enough, and maybe you will get diminishing returns after 9 o'clock at night. I can promise you this. You'll get more returns than if you did nothing. You keep going, because Layla will be an outstanding Member of Parliament for Oxford West and Abingdon, and around... And around this country, there are countless more Liberal Democrats in with a chance of winning. And on behalf of all of them, I urge you to keep going to the end. Winning elections, it is fun. It's a great achievement. It feels fantastic when the result is announced and you have won. But that is not really why we do it. All this delivering of leaflets, giving of money, whacking up state boards. It sounds a crazy thing to do with your spare time. But you do it because the outcome is worth it. When you win, you can change things. When I won in my patch, or when we won the council in my patch, what did we do for the first time in years? We built council houses. We built a thousand council houses. People come to me in my surgery every week with housing need, with serious problems, and I'm no longer just a shoulder to cry on. I can actually deliver them a home. Winning an election changes people's lives. Tomorrow, you have no right to lose when you could win. Get out there and build a country your children and your grandchildren will be grateful for, will be proud of, and be proud of you that you built it. And to the whole country, tomorrow, when somebody looks at you and says, effectively as Theresa May did in calling this early election, I'm going to take you for granted, say no, I will not be taken for granted. My community will not be taken for granted. Our police force will not be taken for granted. Our hospital will not be taken for granted. Our social carers will not be taken for granted. Our teachers will not not be taken for granted. Send Theresa May a message tomorrow. Elect Liberal Democrats. Change Britain's future. Thank you. Thanks, guys.